Hey, good morning guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel. Just thought we'd do another really informative video on probably the hottest subject at the moment. Now, it's been hot for a while, but it just doesn't need to be that hot. The cracked piston, okay? So the small block diesel engine with the cracked pistons. I think 1KDs are probably one of the most popular engines out there, so it happens to those too. We're not gonna talk about the other brands, we'll try not to anyway, but look, so that's what we're talking about. Um, we're also going to include uh, what to do in the event that it happens to you, all the steps you want to go through to make sure you obviously, you know, to get yourself out of trouble, get yourself, keep yourself moving, a whole heap of information. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit organised, but you know, there's a lot of information. I'm going to try and fit it in. Um, we're going to talk about how you can get it fixed, anything from free to cheap, cheap, free, whatever, in most cases. And um, you know, it, it's real action. It's not talking about action. This is real action. This is what to do. So if you want all the information on what to do, if it happens to you, how to prevent it, all the usual sort of thing included, and what to do if it does happen to you and those causes, stay tuned. Um, so lots of in information. Just listen to the end. We don't want you to be in the you know piston regret club or something like that. You know, it's definitely avoidable in most cases um, and we'll just run through all that so let's get started I suppose the first thing we want to talk about is we should recap on the causes what the causes of the crack piston are um, so your top causes now look when I give you this information this is based on real life experience um, I've been working on these for a little while now and we do speak to a lot of people people you know just like you found me now, people have been Googling around, whether it's forums or online, Facebook, whatever, YouTube, Google, whatever it is, and they find me, okay? So maybe a lot of the time a bit of a go-to, so I'll probably get a call from, I don't know, it feels like everybody that's had a crack piston, but probably not everybody. So look, your top causes of a crack piston are having a chip tune or a remap of sorts, right? So if there was a whole heap of people that had a crack piston, okay, and I noticed there's a group, whatever you want to call it, you know, they put they put a question up and there's only like, you know, there's about a hundred replies from people that have actually had crack pistons. And I'd suggest that that's the worst of it because anybody, once they have the problem, that's when they're on the internet, they're on Google, they're not getting help, much help elsewhere. And that's when they find these places. So all the bad news is there. So if you've got, I don't know, 2000 members and there's probably only a hundred or something that have got a crack piston, we're talking minuscule amounts when you consider the hundreds of thousands of these engines just in Australia. Anyway, so when people contact me and they, I ask them all the usual sort of questions and the top one is they've got chips, tunes, okay? This is by far, look, you can have whatever brand, chip or tune you like, it doesn't make any difference to me. I'm just giving the information on what works for reliability, right? Toyota, Prado, Hilux, full drives, whatever other brands, a lot of people they buy them, they want to be real, reliable and a lot of people use them for outback touring, okay? So, if you want reliability, in my opinion, um, from experience, from all these people contacting me, the chips, tunes and things like that are big contributors. Now, we've had tuners that we work closely with and been speaking to for years and they thought it's okay and they did that and then they had a few come back and then they went, oh, bollocks, I think you're right. Anyway, so no more tunes for 1KDs, they said. So there you go, that's the tuner's words. No more tunes for 1KDs. I'm sure they still do them, but obviously you just need to explain to the client, this is what it, you know, look, little four, we'll get to this little four cylinder engine, already highly strung, plenty of power and torque out of a little diesel. You wanna give it even more, something's gonna give. Anyway, we'll get to that. So top causes, definitely chips, tunes, remaps, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and the next one is obviously old flogged injectors because nowhere in the service schedule does it say you need to replace your injectors, okay? And the car pretty well runs well to the end and on the system with the 150s with the injectors from 09 onwards, you rarely see a problem in diagnostics, very rare. Sometimes when you do, the injectors are actually okay when you see a feedback value fluctuating when cold. So you don't want to jump on it and waste a set of injectors either, right? That's why you're best to base it on averages. Now we'll get to you know what we need to do as prevention. We're sort of working towards that. I just want to say, don't you don't have to believe me about what the causes are. Everybody all over online can go on about, oh no, it's this, it's that, no, it's not chips, chips are fine, or no, it's not the injectors, it's the pistons, the pistons are garbage, and they can say, oh no, it's the injectors, oh you know, they can say it's the 
you know, the Reman injectors or the Baileys or the China, like, whatever, like, who cares what people say, right? We're nobody. We're just small fish in the sea, right? We're not even, not even the smallest bait fish. Toyota, believe it or not, and when we say that word Toyota, let's be clear, there's multi-levels when you use the word Toyota. Are you talking about Toyota Japan where, you know, Toyota, you know, manufacturing, they design, you know, quality, clean, organised in Japan, because that's awesome, right, if that's what you're talking about. But, you know, they're not in Australia. It's Toyota Motor Corporation Australia. And then you've got the dealership. So there's all these levels, and they've got to work within certain guidelines. But when you say, I took it to Toyota, please don't say that. You didn't take it to Toyota. They're in Japan. You took it to your local dealership that wears the Toyota badge, that has to follow guidelines. There's people that work there that may or may not be informative and helpful, all right? So just be aware with that. Um, it's well documented by Toyota, not Toyota dealers, that the pistons are not the problem, okay? It's documented that the injectors are the problem, okay? Believe them, they know more about it than us. They put it in writing, you know? They built the cars. They're one of the most successful motor companies. Are they not the most successful? I don't know. I'm not into those statistics, but I think they are, taking a guess. Now, let's have a look at the document. Here we go, let's go and have a look at the document. Okay, so here's the important part, right? At the top, see, Toyota badge here, right? Toyota badge. Got it. Now, it's dated at the top, 18th of the 9th, 2014, okay? This is from overseas, right? This is like, you know, from Europe or something like that. So it doesn't, it's not really that specific to Australia. We're in Australia, yeah? Australia, some people say, Australia, Australia. Anyway, okay, let's have a read. The important parts, right? Down the bottom here. You can have a read of it all if you like. There it is. Description of phenomenon. Some customers may experience and report sudden strong knocking noise from the engine, black smoke from the exhaust and or lack of power. This is caused by a damaged piston. Okay, I've heard the story hundreds of times, right? This is what I'm talking about. Driving along, it's all run beautiful to the end. You'd never know. So it wasn't noisy, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. And, you know, all of a sudden you lose power and then, you know, a bit of smoke out the back maybe and, and then you are, you know, lack of power. You're on the side of the road with a cracked piston. Now we're going to get to what to do. That's not, we're not there yet. What I would like to point out is, if we can get that light out of the picture, that'd be good. Oh, I don't know, how's this going to work out anyway? Just so you can read that, right? <clears throat> okay, production change. Improved injectors to prevent wrong combustion. The reason, <laughs> I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? Wrong combustion, okay? Now number two, people sit there going, but what about number two? It's saying, Okay, the piston shape has changed in order to be more robust. Okay, so I'm not saying there's a problem with the piston. There's not a problem with the piston. Otherwise, hundreds of thousands wouldn't be around doing hundreds of thousands of kilometres, right? Let's just get that happening again, right? You can keep reading it if you like. It's an old document. Don't worry about the VIN numbers and whatever. I can tell you, in Australia, in our cars, we had 110 pistons in the engines. Who else can tell you that? The 2015s have got 110 pistons. The 2014s, at least from halfway through, from middle of the year, have got 110 pistons. Who else can tell you that? Oh, they can pluck at straws and have a guess, but I can tell you that. So if you've got a late 14 or a 15, you've got 110 pistons. I want to also tell you they're not bulletproof. We're going to get to that. I can show you how they crack as well. Now, basically, you've seen the document. What that's saying is, right, that there's... Obviously, injectors get to a point they're not working right. Wrong combustion. Let's keep it sweet. Let's keep it simple, right? Right? Wrong combustion. Beautifully worded, right? Injectors aren't working right for whatever reason. You know, over, under, timing, whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Wrong combustion. Makes a mess in there, and that's what happens. You end up cracking a piston. They're trying to make the piston stronger so that it can withstand these issues. But you just can't make a piston that strong. Now, people talk about aftermarket brands and whatever without bothering to name anyone or who rebuilds the engines or would seem like a main person, whatever, those people have had cracked pistons, okay? And I'd suggest they're a minority compared to OEM manufacturing, right? The OEM manufacturing is big numbers, millions of engines, and they have bugger all cracked pistons, and then you've got a few hundred rebuilt engines with X brand piston, and people, one for example, he's got cracked piston at 90,000 Ks. What's the answer? Oh, what, are you going to blame the injectors? Hang on a minute. 
we said it's not the injectors, it's the crap pistons. So obviously all the other pistons are crap as well, right? No, wrong. It's the injectors. You can't build a piston that strong. Anyway, whatever. We'll move on from that. There it is. The cause is, or well, you determine that however you like, okay? Think about the facts. There it is. Okay, so now that we've established that injectors and wrong combustion are the cause of the problem, if the engine wasn't messed with as in chips tunes and other sorts of things now i would suggest that EGR exhaust gas recirculation is messing with things okay um, carbonization of the nozzles sometimes could be a contributor spray patterns and stuff okay so exhaust gas recirculation good and bad you know there's lots of pros and cons that's another video now as far as prevention goes we've been banging on about this for years okay here there and everywhere the best thing you can do is subscribe to this channel and go back and watch all the videos. Search the channel, injectors, EGR, inject info, whatever. Anything that interests you. There's a lot of information there regarding servicing, looking after your vehicle, whatever. So you can watch what you, you do with it. The information's there. Get yourself educated, right? Now, prevention. Of course, the number one, they've just said it's caused by injectors, right? And I'll agree with that, okay? And what would I know? But I'll agree with that. That's what I believe. Um, the best thing you can do is have fresh injectors, right? When I say fresh, you're not changing them every week, every month. It's not like apples, right? Look, it depends. It, there's a few variables there, and there's going to be more detail in other videos. But as a general guide, about seven years or 170,000 Ks is the... But that's averages of all different year vehicles. So anything before 2010, change the injectors. I'm not interested in diagnostics, and you shouldn't be either. Okay. <clears throat> Another one, good service, okay? So good service, when we say good service, well, simple things like oil good oil and oil changes so it's all nice and clean. Keeping all your filters clean or replaced and your sensors. Your sensors are what feed the computer to tell it what to do, right? If it's not getting the right signals from block filters, dirty sensors and stuff like that, then, you know, it's gonna be a contributor, okay? So sensors and filters clean. Now, it's not really part of prevention, well, Last thing I suppose, we, we, do I need to say chips and tunes? No, let's move on. Right, now, sort of as prevention, it's not really prevention, but the best thing you can do is, one of the best things, we've well, got a few, is be in your Royal Automobile Club, RA, RA, CV, Q, NRMA, whatever it is, right? So, you know, I should be getting commission from, uh, from RA, CV. Anyway, <coughs> it is the best thing you can do. If you're just using the vehicle around home within 100 k's, wouldn't be too worried about it. You can get a tow, you're not far away, no big deal, whatever, right? This isn't gonna help with your prevention. This is gonna help prevent you spending hundreds and thousands of dollars in stressful situations. If you use the vehicle touring the outback going distances from home, you need that top level of cover, okay? Now, there's a few myths about what's covered and what's not covered. We've probably covered that in another video and we'll probably leave it for another video because this is really to talk about the crack piston, sort of try and keep it closely re related. We don't want people to worry about it, okay? This is so rare, it's not funny. If you're in a group that makes you get worried and you know um, you think that it's gonna happen to you and you're just biting your nails and your hair's falling out, get out of the group, okay? Because I'll tell you now, mate, we've got hundreds of people that either get their car service, injectors replaced, buy injectors. This includes trade guys that replace injectors and we don't see these issues, okay? It's so rare, it's not funny. When you get onto a group where someone search online, that's where you're gonna see it all. Okay, so get in your, your Royal Automobile Club at the top level of cover if you're gonna travel. That's gonna sort of cover you for your towing and some other benefits as well. We can maybe get into the benefits later in the video, but look, you know, it's going on a bit already, but it's important information. <clears throat> now, worst case scenario, right? Let's just go to worst case scenario. So we've covered the causes and prevention pretty much. Okay, so it's not going to happen. Okay, well, that, that's a, the chances are it's not going to happen because based on all the numbers we see from people that do the right thing, it ain't going to happen. But there's a big but there, right? What if it does? So if it does, <clears throat> probably what's happened is you've got some fuel contamination because there's a number of different ways this can happen. Um, and it happens too often, right? Um, we do work for um, tanker drivers and that who deliver fuel. A few facts they tell us are people do accidentally drop fuel in the wrong hole. So you could end up with unleaded in the diesel. Um, 
when you if you if you get ring up or go back in and say hey I've done that you lose your job so what are some people going to do they're going to cover it up best they can and possibly even their employer might want to cover it up I don't know that's up to them I'm just saying they might want to do that I'm not saying they would do that they would they wouldn't whatever it, it's possible okay now the other thing that happens is um, you know we, we all know people whatever Someone used to tell me, and he was in Shell for 40 years, right? From the bottom, all the way from his mechanics apprenticeship, all the way through, well, I don't know, I won't say to the top, but up there anyway. The drivers used to report when they'd go out and make a delivery <clears throat> to some independents without naming any brands. And look, we love our independents because they help keep it competitive. So there's plenty of good guys out there, but there is some that do buy chemicals back. Um, obviously it's a lot cheaper price, it goes into their tank, say 5,000 litres into a 20,000 litre delivery into a 25,000 litre tank, and there it's been cut and, you know, they can sell fuel cheaper. Now, every now and then when we change fuel filters, we do smell the unleaded and we smell these weird smells, and I'm tipping that's probably what's going on. So contamination's a big factor, and of course your water, if you're not careful, you know, obviously with your fuel and if you keep your tanks empty, condensation, if you leave the cars parked, the, the algae and all that sort of thing. So there's a number of other factors that you can't really control those ones. You've got filters, but they only do, you know, there's a certain efficiency they cover and water does get through filters to injectors, oh, believe me. So if that's happened and then it sits for a while and look, sitting around is not a good thing either. Okay, so let's move on a bit. Um, probably contamination if you're one of the very few on the very outside. And you know, people go on about Toyota saying contamination. Well, they're, they're right. They've got the information. They Look, I get it with the cut. Sometimes the service isn't what it should be, and I totally agree it should be better, and this shouldn't be happening. I've said that before. I'm not saying that this is okay. And for a company the size of Toyota, they should be just sorting it out, right? And maybe they are. So I'm not saying they're not, because maybe they are. In some cases, it's a bit inconsistent, maybe, whatever, you know? So what, this is what you want to do, right? Let's go, let's work on to what you want to do. Um, you want to get, you want to go somewhere independent. You go to a Toyota dealer, they're sort of like we already talked, they've got to work under guidelines of Toyota Australia, whatever, Australia. What you want to do is go independent. You want to find a big reputable diesel shop. This is what you do, you contact me, right? So if you've done the right preventative steps, you've done your, all your service maintenance, you're watching the videos, <coughs> you've got an injector kit off me, but you're in the VIP group. If it happens to you, you ring me. We've got a number of things to cover you for this, right? So the first thing we're going to say is shoot me a video with the bonnet up, you know, engine running, nice steady with the camera, take the cap off, choo -choo 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 -choo. yep, yep, crack piston. That's all we need to do, and we're pretty sure it's a crack piston, right? Nothing else stops these cars, these, these engines, right? So contact me we can recommend somewhere where you want to go in your area well, let's talk about it i'm happy to do it because we're not going to have many calls on this if you've done the right thing don't ring me if you've got injectors in there for 300,000 k's oh i did a diagnostic there at nah. don't ring me if you've got a chip or a tune anything like that don't ring me you haven't taken my advice from the start please go do whatever you're going to do call someone else if you want to take my advice i'm happy to back you up okay independent fuel test right you need to go somewhere independent we need to go to the right place you can even use the people that we use, right? You need to have your fuel sent there, your injector sent there, right? Now, obviously, you're going to need a new engine. So you can wait, or you can just go ahead and do this. There's a number of different ways. I'm not going to put too much detail in the video because it's just going to go on. We're already going on, right? But we need an independent fuel injector test, right? And probably what's going to happen, if everything else is right, then you're probably going to find that the fuel's bad, and um, there's going to be other evidence proving that and um, your injectors are going to be flogged as well. They're going to find that with the test, right? So, um, independent fuel test, an injector test, because you can make an insurance claim. If you've got the wrong fuel, as in, you know, it's contaminated water or whatever, it's been cut or there's unleaded in there, as long as you didn't make the mistake, you're not covered for that. You might be lucky, but you're not covered if you make the mistake. So keep your receipts for your last few fills in your console, you can get rid of them every few months, right? Keep the last, I don't know, six or ten just to cover yourself as my advice, as a minimum. That's what I do, okay? So accident, it comes under accidental damage. Some people think, oh, insurance, no. Well, insurance doesn't cover you for mechanical damage, right? That's mechanical problems and it's just mechanically happened. This isn't mechanical. It's accidental. Like when you crash your car, you had an accident. Well, there's no room for accidents. Concentrate or kill. But anyway, you had an accident, or well, same thing, you had an accident. Someone's, you know, supplied you the wrong fuel, 
whatever. That's not an accident. It's a bit, if you put the wrong fuel in, that's not an accident. You've got to take a bit, little bit of, um, you know, um, what's the word? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is you've got to take enough care to put the right fuel in. Then you haven't caused the problem. So it's accidental damage. You can make an insurance claim. Sorry, insurance companies, but we need to tell them so they're aware of their rights. Okay, so if it is accidental damage caused by the wrong fuel being in there one way or the other, butter boom, butter bing, right? So you just need to be able to prove that, which is why you've got your independent fuel and injector test, right? And sometimes it's worth getting a second opinion if it doesn't go your way, because I'm telling you, there's going to be problems with injectors or it's going to have a chip or trim. There's something going on if you've got a crack piston. Now, there might be one in a million or something where someone was towing three tonne, so with the car loaded, it's a six tonne, and they're just, it's just cooking the engine. So maybe there's a few that's just going to happen anyway, but in most cases, this is what you're going to find. Now, let's move on to the only way to fix it reliably, in my opinion, is a new long motor. So a brand new long motor from Toyota. Um, there's other, you know, related information with that, but I'll just keep it short. New long motor, comes with injectors, pipes, water pump on it, whatever. Again, we've been telling you that for many years. Um, now, they probably come with 110 pistons because these engines haven't been sitting around. They wouldn't have foreseen needing this many engines, okay? So, and there's been people waiting on back order, I think, for a month or two at some time. So, obviously, I think they had to resupply. They have the latest pistons in them now. You know, that document was from 2014. That was five years ago or something, you know? Ridiculous. Ages ago. But look, it's not all about the 110 pistons. Let's have a look at those, right? Because, um, you know, 110 pistons do crack. Let's get up there and have a look at one of those. Okay, so here's a 1KD with a cracked piston. All right, can have a look in there what that looks like. All right, whatever, whatever, yeah. And there's your crack hole, all right, you can see. Standard stuff, right? We tried to clean it so we could get a number off it, but it was hard to get a number off it, right? Can't really see it on that one. Right, because they don't engrave it. Like on the older, or the 040s and the 080s, and the 080s were meant to be upgraded, that didn't work out. Like I said, not that easier to just make stronger pistons, but look at this, right? See the 110? It's like a print. Because we had to clean off the carbon to see it. Can you see that 110 right in the middle of the picture? There's a 110. It's really hard to see. You can see the B, the 2. I'll just keep moving around. I hope you can see it. It's really hard to see in the camera, that's for sure. Anyway, you can see that 110. You can see it, right? Very hard. There's another video anyway. If you haven't seen it, I've got other videos showing this. Anyway, 110 pistons, same engine. There it is. You got it cracked, right? So the proof's out there. 15 years of redesigning pistons, and you can't make it indestructible. So, like we said, it's not the piston. But let's go and have a look at another one over here. Okay, so we said we're going to tell you about how to get it fixed for free or cheap. We're working on that. We believe that if you do everything right, you're going to avoid the problem. And worst case scenario, something like this happens, it's going to be contamination and you're going to get it under your insurance. Now, the other thing we've got is, we call it crack piston insurance or crack piston warranty. You know, using it's really a slang term for it. It's just a group of people, like-minded, that have done the right thing. And it's really a crack piston fund. And we've got an account there with some money sitting there and it's for people that have done the right thing no chips or tunes and they've got fresh injectors and there's a whole bunch of people not having any issues once they've done that so we've got a little fund right so it's a lousy 200 bucks and it covers you for up to five years there is terms and conditions and details although like i said it's not insurance or warranty it's just it's a bunch of mates it's almost like a cooperative but it's not that either it's just you know it's a fund you know we'll call it the crack piston fund now if all else fails with your insurance claim you've got the crack piston fund right which will pay your excess anyway and anything that whatever um, isn't covered under your insurance right that's what it's there for um, and if your insurance doesn't cover it it'll pay if we've done everything we can it'll pay for your engine to be replaced with a brand new long motor up to a value of $12,000, I think we said. I'd have to check that, don't hold me to it. Um, because we can get a brand new long motor fitted at a Toyota dealer for $12,000. Now, I'm not saying that's the best way to go. That's probably your best value for money way to go, right? 
to get someone that's really good to put the engine in, it's going to cost you more than that, but it's just putting an engine in. Now, if all else fails, right, you've also got the um, Consumer Affairs Tribunals, so that's small claims in each state, Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, whatever, you know, VCAT, NCAT, QCAT, right? When these cases are prevented, to, uh, pre not prevented, when they are, um, um, what's the word? Jeez, I lost my word again, it happens all the time. <laughs> Once you take this to the court, and uh, as a consumer, this happens to you, generally you're gonna do pretty well because it shouldn't happen. Now, so, I know a bit about this because I work on this car, but you know, how about some other reasons why I know so much about this? Well, I can tell you why I know a bit more about it and probably thought more about it and why I started the Crack Piston Fund is because it actually happened to me, right? So my vehicle has cracked a piston. Um, that was earlier this year. It was nearly, I'll, I'll give you some information, okay? So let's go from the start. This vehicle was purchased at around 200,000 kilometers already with original injectors in it, okay? So that's an important part to keep in mind. Original injectors for 200,000, original EGR, standard service, well, we hope. And then obviously we started looking after it really well, put injectors in it, you know, cleaned up the EGR, etc., and started looking after it really well. It also got used really well also, you know, five, six years of punishing trips and conditions, being loaded up on the roof, wind resistance, and traveling at, you know, kind of the speed limit, um, you know, 110-ish, let's say, you know, wind resistance and some towing, towing boats, camper trailers and whatever. In the first 200,000 k's it towed caravan around Australia a number of times. <clears throat> there were services in Broome, so it's had a hard life and many, many days, weeks of days on the tracks, say, with the engine running 10 hours, you know, sort of like, a lot more hours than kilometres, if you know what I mean. Out on the tracks, you might do 50 or 100 k some days, but the engine's running all day, and it got left to idle a lot as well. So I actually expected this to happen um, not long after I got it, because we, we know about the issue with the crack piston, right? There it is, and you can see it's the old 040s. Even the 040s lasted that long. So if the pistons are that bad, well, why did they last that long? Anyway, this had a couple of dodgy sets of injectors around the 200,000 mark. We won't bother mentioning what brand they were, but three sets went in before we said, bugger this, let's put genuine Densos in. Okay, at that point, it was like, yeah, I don't know about these injectors, but anyway, <clears throat> this got another set of injectors um, just after 300,000 Ks, because that's how I roll. I do what I say, fresh injectors. Um, they were three, three or so, four years old. Um, there's people out there that need a cheaper set of injectors, so they were sold clean, second-hand injectors, save someone some money, that, that's all they could afford. But for me, I'll have fresh injectors every few years. The plan was every 150,000 Ks, but I couldn't wait that long. So these injectors that were in the engine, they don't, and this is some information, you know, for old mate and everyone that wants to know, I don't mind sharing, mate, it's all good as far as I'm concerned. Um, someone said to me, uh, what was it, come together for the... The, the greater good, yeah, well that's it, exactly. I don't know what your problem is, but anyway. Um, basically, you can have a look at this combustion here, right? Now, number one, it's all really clean because of the fuel and the oil, right? You have a look at that combustion, you tell me what's going on there. Uh, hello, you know, there's nothing normal about that. Okay, and that, and that. Now, when I took the fuel sample, straight away I noticed the smell, okay, it wasn't right. Um, the the place I took the sample to, they said, they laughed at it and said, oh yeah, that's bad contamination, that's got unleaded in it. I thought it was, they, I wasn't sure what it was. I smelled like, kind of like thin as some sort of chemical, whatever, uh, possibly the fuel had been cut, I believe, because to me it wasn't unleaded. The testing came back, failed, contamination, the injectors were then also um, tested, all four failed, and they were then stripped down and inspected, and yeah, obviously there was um, damage to those. So that's, yeah, unfortunate, obviously, that happened with our 1KD that was at nearly 400,000 Ks. But the good news is, I got to do what I always wanted to do, and that was put a new engine in and start fresh, because we've got one of the best vehicles out there. As far as I'm concerned, it's all a positive. I was happy to do that. Um, but what was a bonus was having the insurance cover it, because it was accidental damage. So they were sent a bill, for nearly $20,000 and they paid it. Okay, so if you need any help with prevention of these crack pistons, 
okay? Um, maintenance, what you need to do, steps to take, um, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and get in there and watch the videos. Now, give me a break for a minute and I'm gonna give you some more important information shortly. All right, so now you've got to have a look around both the engines. You've been given a whole heap of facts about pistons, right? How the old ones last so long and how this one, I didn't mention the 110s over there. That was from a mid 2014 manufactured Prado. So we know they've got, let's say we know they've got 110s. Um, and it was all pretty, not bad, fairly clean combustion, a bit black lock over fueling. That's all. Well, you'd had a chip on it. Again, we're not going to name the brand, probably one of the most popular ones out there, but I don't give a stuff about what brand it is, okay? Because this is what we see, you know, and we ask what brand and it just, it's the whole lot, okay? Now, if this does happen to you and you've done the right things, you've put your fresh injectors in, obviously, and you're following my information, you're in the VIP group because you've got your parts and followed all, it's about the right procedures as well. The job's got to be done right. So you need to either take it to one of our recommended repairers that we approve to do the installation or you need to get in the VIP group because you've already decided you know you're going to do it yourself so we're here to back you up on that so you've got to get in the VIP watch all the videos and make sure you get it done right there's heaps of videos there that go for hours and hours little tech tip videos longer full-length videos on number of different cars showing you how to do the whole job with a whole lot of dribble and information in between right get yourself trained and equipped to do it right I don't believe you're going to have any issues, all right? Now, so if you've done all that, and this happens to you, the first thing you really want to do is make give me a ring. Don't muck around. If you can't get a hold of me, text me in capital letters. Urgent, please, crack piston. You know, I, it's never happened, you know. I got injected, I did your whatever. You want to get in contact with me. Even better if you're in the crack piston fund, because, you know, we're going to... It's, it's going to work out pretty well for you, but... Look, there's so many different ways we can give it, get this covered is what I'm trying to point out. Um, doing the wrong thing, taking the wrong steps, like you know, having a chip on there and driving straight into your nearest Toyota dealer. Bada bing, bada boom, mate. This engine over here, 110 pistons, 100,000, 102,000 Ks that it had on it. So it just goes to show how soon the latest revision of pistons can crack if the combustion is not right. And here, how long they can last if everything is right. And that's, I'm telling you, that was with a lot of towing and a re yeah, so look, you know, there's a bit of luck that that lasted that long as well, I think. I didn't expect it, right? I expected it a lot sooner. The vehicle got used extensively on massive trips. It's been all over the country, and um, it became reliable, you know? So luckily, we weren't too far from home when it happened. So if you hear otherwise, again, wrong information. So you, you can contact me, and I'll tell you, I can tell you what your RAC, your Royal Automobile Club entitlements are because we've been through that and they looked after us super well you know it didn't cost a cent to get the vehicle back didn't cost anything for it to get us around or accommodation or anything it was beautiful there are limits and i can tell you what they are because there's a lot of confusion about what you're covered for and what you're not right don't please don't send call me to ask me what, what you're covered for until it happens okay there's going to be all these people we'll try and fit it in another video um, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to happen when it happens that's when you need to know what you need to know is if you're going to trust me believe me you want to have the top cover of RAC if you're traveling okay you want to have fresh injectors you want to have all your service filters and everything clean and right you want to have be in the crack piston fund right the fund we've got you want to be in that you want to make sure you've got car insurance that covers you for accidental damage and it does that's what an accident is right so you've got that okay so that pretty well covers the things you want to have now what else was I going to say? I was going to tell you something else as well. But anyway, let me have a think about it. I think we're just about done. All right, guys, so I don't know. I think I'm done pretty much. I hope that gives you a much better understanding. I'm here to help. Obviously, we've recognised, um, you know, specialising in these. We've chosen this vehicle because they're an awesome vehicle, okay? So if we wanted to just, I suppose, be in business and make money, there's a lot, you'd just work on all sorts of vehicles and you'd be busy and make plenty of money. We're specialising in these because we think they're awesome vehicles. They are very reliable. The Toyota engineering is really solid and we don't believe it's an issue with the engine or the piston. It's good of them to try and let us know that they're going to try and make it stronger, but it doesn't work out. You've just got to remember with injectors, they're wear and tear items. You can't leave them in there for a long time. And one of the most important things is know about diagnostics from 09 onwards. You're not going to see much you want to replace them by time. They've got to come out anyway to do the seats, so wouldn't it make sense to you to just do the injectors while you're at it, have fresh ones, it's cleaner, it's more efficient, responsive, 
Um, you know, it's better for the environment, you know, for our health, everything. It's just better to have the engine running clean. It's really simple. This is just an engine. It's got four cylinders. Everything that happens in it is controlled by combustion, which is two things. The injectors are everything, and the other thing's fuel pressure. That's your suction control valve. Now, don't be fooled. You own, look, the short one, don't even talk about it. Upgrade it and put the long one in. We've told you, talked about that before. That's other videos. This is what I keep saying. Watch the other videos, okay? Now, guys, I'm sorry I took so long to get this information out to you. You know, I'm flat out doing other videos and very busy, obviously, doing other things. There's a whole lot of aspects to the business. Um, but, look, there you go. Hopefully that helps. So, um, I say what better person for it to happen to. Um, there's no, I don't have any ill feeling against Toyota or anything like that, blaming them or whatever. Um, there's nobody to blame. It's just what it is, okay? Um, you know, we can blame the contamination. Did you need to have a look at that combustion again? You know, it's shocking in there, okay? So it all adds up. You can see that the failed injectors, the fuel contamination, it's a very rare thing that you can't control, but you want to be covered if it does. And just understand that the odds of this happening are so small, it's not funny. Um, when this video goes up, if there was anyone that said, oh, I'm one of the hundreds of people that brought injectors off you and I cracked a piss and whatever, then I think, you know, people would be speaking up. Um, there is one person that had a crack piston shortly afterwards. It was, again, up near 400,000 Ks, but the original, the injectors were left in for about 240,000 Ks, a little bit too long. What you've got to understand with this, it's not like a light switch. It's not, this is a light switch. See this? On, off, on, off, on, off. Pistons don't crack like a light switch, right? That's fatigue over time. That crack could be there for a long time, and that's where engines could be slowly using a bit of oil. Right, could be thousands of Ks, it's like that, before it actually blows the main hole through, okay? So, if you, you could be very unfortunate that, so that's why, you know, in the first 10 or 20,000 Ks even, it's kind of a bit risky, just don't leave them in too long, right? You need to do the seats, they don't last forever. Go watch the other videos. Guys, I hope that makes you feel better. Thanks for watching, I'm here to help. If you do the right thing and you follow the information, I'm here to back you up, okay? That's what I do, I specialize in this, not just it's not just about working on Prados and whatever. I'm here to back you up and help you with that. It's a bit of a different business. It's a unique boutique service that I provide. It's not like your typical business, all right? Once again, hit the subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Look forward to seeing some comments and um, yeah, questions and that. Like always, bring yourself over to the Facebook groups. Oz Prado Crew is the main one if you're in Australia. And if you're overseas, probably hashtag 1KD Forever Crew would be the most relevant to this video. We've also got the engine group, Toyota 1KD FTV injectors and engine for anything injector engine related. Again, as I've mentioned before, a whole heap of mechanics, diesel fitters, business owners in there. It's up to them if they want to help or not. Doesn't seem to be that much input all the time considering the group um, numbers. So obviously they don't know much. They're just there to learn and I'm happy to help. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week. Hope you had a great week last week. I only say week because you don't want to look too far in the future, okay? Just enjoy the day, enjoy the week, and um, plan to have a good one. Your engine's going to be sweet as long as you've done all the right things. See ya.